Good afternoon, everybody. It's so wonderful to be here. As my plane was landing from California and I was seeing the beautiful mountains of Seattle, I just realized how homesick I had been. So, you know, we were in Pullman, Washington for almost 25 years. And so it's great to be here in this beautiful city, in this wonderful stadium, and at this great event. I have wonderful memories of coming to the stadium uh, with my family, not just to see the, um, you know, the, the regular games, but also some of the Coug games. For the next 20 minutes, what I'd like to do is to tell you a little bit about what we have done specifically in bringing virtual reality to sports. And I, I, I kind of want to put it out there right now. I know that in my audience, I will have people maybe with different uh, mindsets, or you may al already think of this in one way or the other. And my request to you is to keep an open mind, uh, you know, see, see what we have been doing and, and what the overall vision is. And I do want to say that when you think about technology such as these, right, virtual reality and bringing events to folks who are not able to attend these events, and so when you're providing these alternative means by which they can experience the sports, it is not a zero-sum game. I intrinsically reject that notion that if you have technologies such as these that are providing alternatives, that in some way it might be cannibalizing from, people, uh, from people's attendance at the events. I think that these kinds of alternatives are actually going to make people more excited, more engaged, and hence, I feel that this technology, this approach, really is very impactful. It's impactful because it brings the sporting experience, not just to maybe the 20,000 folks that can come to the event, but to a much larger audience. It is impactful because it allows people to connect with the things that they love. End of the day, it's a connection with something that you love your sporting team, the game. And finally, it's also very impactful because we believe that there is a lot of value to the larger ecosystem because now there are going to be, we need to have that dialogue. There are going to be new business models. There are going to be new revenue models. There are going to be uh, new aspects of all of this and we need to start having those conversations. I would like to briefly tell you how we came up on this path. And so some folks come into these experiences from the sports side of it. In my case, I came more from the technology side of it. And so as um, you know, was graciously pointed out in the introduction, I was also a professor at Washington State University. And just a, a small point I wanted to make, we were working with companies such as Komatsu, NASA, um, Sandia National Labs, uh, you know, closer to home here, um, Peter Peterbilt and Kenwood Trucks, Packard. And so we were looking at how to solve engineering problems using virtual reality. So fast forward a decade, and what we were now trying to solve, and I use that because as engineers, essentially everything is a problem and you're trying to solve a problem. And so the problem that we were trying to solve was, if you think about sporting events, you have, in a way, I mean, two broad choices. You can be at the game, or you can be at home, and you watch this on TV, and by extension, you know, on your mobile phone and so on. So really, you have these two broad choices. And we, again, rejected the notion that this was how you could watch a game. And we said, is there another way? Is there something else out there? And I kind of think of it as our platform nine and three quarter moment. 
and maybe someone in the audience or many of you know what I'm referring to. And in case you don't, it's the Harry Potter moment, right? He has to go through to the magic land and he's told that he needs to go to platform nine and three quarter. And what's platform nine and three quarter, right? And so for us, we are like, okay, this platform nine, this platform 10, we need to go somewhere in between. And as we try to look for this magic world that would allow us to go to something different, something which would give a new experience, we realized there was a platform nine and three quarter that took us on to the Hogwarts Express. And so essentially, we went about creating new experiences for fans, engaging them with the things that they love, and doing that in a VR headset. And so here, we, we then realized that the market was growing, and today, some of the numbers that you see, essentially, it's a huge market, you know, um, different versions of this, but essentially, I think the key takeaway from here is that the potential for this market overall in VR, and of course, in terms of VR for sports, is huge. I'm here to talk more about what it is that we created and what is it that is uh, the experience and what is the value proposition in terms of these events. And I like to think of it as three key elements. We brought together three key elements to make this experience something that people keep wanting to come back to again and again. And these three key elements, the first one is the experience. The second one is the storytelling. And the third is the technology. And there's a reason why I have said it in that order. You see, I have not made technology the fundamental piece of it. I've not built over technology. Instead, we know in engineering that a triangle is really a very, very stable structure. And for us, we have achieved this success. We have achieved this uh, great uh, experience for the end user because we focused on three aspects and all three of these are really important. And I think that's one key message that I want to give uh, to the audience here today that we have to think holistically because if you're pushing some technology for the sake of technology's sake, I mean, you all are the experts, you know it so well. Uh, really, I think the end user whoever he or she may be is going to reject it. It has to fit in as part of the storytelling, and it has to fit in with a meaningful experience. So some examples of what we've done uh, very recently. Um, we were there at the PGA Tour. Uh, we were at the championship game. And so what is it that we do? We're there with our own capture systems. So we have our own panoramic cameras. And with that, we then essentially go through a whole pipeline and deliver this experience at home where someone can experience this on a VR headset. You just saw me come up on stage with one of the VR headsets. There are several others, as you all know. And so if you look at the second one, the March Madness, essentially sitting at home, you could go to the Oculus store you could download the VR app, the NCAA VR app. You could then just put on the headset. You saw how light that was and relatively inexpensive because if you have a Samsung phone, then all you need is $100, um, just the headset that goes with it. So it's just one example. And so as you can see, this is getting mainstream. It's on the Oculus Store. We are covering events, and then there is tremendous traction related to this for a number of other, other events too. I've just, excuse me. I just have some of the events up here. And so we have covered a wide spectrum. We've done uh, you know, football, we've done soccer, we've done basketball, we've done golf, um, you know, done, we're doing baseball right now. 
And so essentially it shows the relevance of this technology and this experience to a large number of sporting events. And Intel Sports is now uh, you know, very much mainstream in providing these experiences. What does it look like when you go in? I, I just wanted to show you the landing portal. So if you go into the headset, remember this is now stereoscopic 3D video feed that you'll be seeing. But when you first go into the landing portal, you put on the headset, you look around, essentially you have a 360 immersive environment. So you can look around and you can just see 360. Important thing is, our currently our video feed and the video that we send is 180. So we have the 180 video in a 360 immersive environment. And what does that do for you? Essentially, you can use the rest of the real estate um, for advertisement, for statistics, for um, social feeds. So you can do a bunch of different things in that real estate. Or you also have, of course, the option of creating a 360 and then bringing all of that into the environment. So what you have is the concept of different channels. You can go in, and this is an example of the PGA Tour. And then within that, you can go ahead, and you have a number of different um, aspects of that. This is something that I thought would be of interest to you. It's showing you how we are making this an environment where you don't have to keep taking off your headset to be able to see scores, to be able to see some other rich metadata some uh, statistics. So we have created the technology to bring a lot of these. We, we work with the different feeds and so on coming in, and we're able to provide this very rich environment for folks that put on the headset. Very quickly, touching on the technology and what enables all of that. So we have these camera pods. We go to these events. With our camera pod, we could have multiple ones. And then you essentially can select which pod you want to be at. So for example, when we did NCAA, we had about, I believe, about eight of these pods. These pods are these 180 degree camera pods. And so we had two of them uh, you know, stanchion mounted, like just there under the basket. Uh, we had two facing into the audience. We had two on the, uh, on the side. And so you can have different locations based on what is relevant to that sport. And so when we, for example, did an event at the 49er Stadium, we had, I believe, about eight or nine of those. And what's interesting is, in addition to these individual feeds that you, when you put on your headset, can select, you, we also have created a produced feat so that it gives an experience closer to, closer to the broadcast kind of feed where you're bringing together the best from all of these and putting it together. I do want to mention that in this experience, we have found that audio is extremely important. And the example I give is if you were to watch, say, a horror movie and you turn off the sound, it's, it's not scary, right? If you are watching a sporting event, if you can't hear the audio, audio part of it, then it's not as impactful. And so we have made audio a tremendous part of our experience. And we've also had special VR commentary coming into this experience. This is just to show the end-to-end -end solution where we have the capture. We do stitching in real time. And then that's the whole beauty of this. You can watch this while the game is going on. It's not something that is brought to you after an hour or after a day. As the game is going on in near real time, you're able to watch this. And then ultimately, you have these enabling experiences. And what we are doing now, what I have described, the true VR technology, is a piece of the overall Intel True VR platform. And we have volumetric video, personalization, and so on, all coming together in a very, very 
impactful and a very meaningful way to bring these experiences to the audiences. And this gives you an idea of the action on game day. So we have our crew with our special equipment at these events. And if you kind of look through those little uh, blocks in there, there are people setting things up. We, are, we have our own van. You can see the, um, the commentators rehearsing out there and then monitoring going on for all these feeds coming in. And so it's a huge, huge, um, it's kind of a beautiful workflow that brings things from the field to your home so that you can experience it either in a VR headset or we also have other options where you can uh, do things on your uh, mobile phone or a web interface, which is of course not 3D, but that is another important uh, option. And so finally, I just wanted to bring up some of the some of the aspects that we all in this community, people interested in bringing VR to sports, will continue to work on. And so we have, of course, we have to further work on quality. We have to work on ease of use. We have to work on bandwidth issues, make the audio more, um, you know, even more integrated. Uh, content, content has to be uh, pristine. And, and so all of these, uh, we continue to bring these together in a meaningful way. And uh, definitely Intel is partnering with so many others in the ecosystem so that we are able to do, uh, you, you know, really bring this technology to life. And so with that, uh, I hope there was, uh, you, you got some, a glimpse into some of the experiences that we are creating. And if you go to the Oculus Store, you can download uh, the Intel TrueVR app. And within that, there are channels. You can check it out. And um, you know there are other apps also that we have created. Uh, we have white label apps, which are then uh, branded depending on uh, the entity that we are working with. And so it's an exciting time. I'm so glad to have shared this with you all. And um, you know, look forward to kind of being with you all in this journey as we bring this to sporting events. Thank you so much.